Hello everybody, welcome back to another video of Heroes of the Storm. Today we are continuing our How to Bruise series and we've landed upon Mathael. So, pulling up the list here, you can see that I have him in the damage and wave clear categories, but he is not in the tanky one, which means he's kind of struggling on a tanky bit. Now, you'll see other heroes in this category like Samuro, Ragnaros, and Sonya, and wonder what's going to make you want to pick Mathael over those three other heroes. Well, what it is, is Mathael deals percent damage. So if you need a hero that shreds tanks by dealing good damage and can double soak at ease, Mathael is your hero to pick. He does struggle whenever he's getting locked down or kited, which is why he's very good into tanky, typically melee targets. As if the enemy team picks something like a Vala or a Zagara, um, you can kind of get bullied. But... If they have those tanky heroes that you're drafting him properly, you will be able to absolutely shred and melt them. So much fun. He is one of my favorite bruisers to play, but unfortunately, with just how weak he is, you're typically better off picking other things because you rarely see a double tank matchup in the game of Heroes of the Storm. Nonetheless, he's a very strong double soaker and good at taking camps, so you're still able to make him effective uh, in a regular game of something like quick match. So that's what I'm going to try to do in today's game is be effective with Mathael because he's one of the most effective soakers in the game. So we're going to jump to it and hopefully have some fun. All right, and we find ourselves on the Volskaya Foundry today. So, enemy team is not tanky in the slightest. And not only are they not tanky in the slightest, but they also have some good lockdown with Kira and Anduin stuns. So, this is definitely going to be a very challenging game to try to win. But, every single game is winnable, and the, uh, the only thing stopping you from winning is you. So, try your best to win. Um... Now we do have Vikings, but that's not going to change the way that I play. I'm still going to try my best to just soak, soak, soak. And truthfully, I don't want to be anywhere near these heroes at any point in the game. I think we're going to pick up on a Pale White Horse. Uh, and I'll talk about the talents at the end of the game. And I've been asked to talk about a little skin synergy in my videos. So this is my favorite skin combo because I pick up this talent on a Pale Horse. And my horse is a Pale Horse. Horse. It's fantastic. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's happy. La la la. So, yeah, I want to stay far away from them. We're going to abuse our fantastic wave clear that Mathael has and get this minion wave soaked up immediately. And then we have a super fast mount movement speed. So we'll catch any soak missing here in the middle lane. And do our best to just survive. Survive and our win condition is going to be get ahead on experience. If we can get ahead on experience, we could win this game. I'm going to use my E to mark these minions. And then I can use that to get on top of the, the Zul'jin. And that's, that's really the only way that you can get on top of heroes. Oh, he's not even going to die, is he? Going to have to dodge some spells here. Well, it looks like we'll be fine. Um, and soak, soak up top lane quickly. Now, if Tracer sticks to me like you saw there, I will lose. And I think she's rotating top to come find me. There she is. So I don't really want to be in the same lane as her. But I don't want to be in the same lane as any of these heroes. So it's fine to just sit back and relax. Yes, these minions aren't getting pushed. But I'm not dying and not losing XP for my team. So, I mean, we're losing a very small amount. But the small amount that we lost from not fighting those minions is minuscule compared to the amount that uh, I would have lost if I died. And not only that, but we were forcing, not forcing, but we were making it seem like I was vulnerable for death. And by doing that, ah, by doing that, uh, the enemy Li Ming overextended herself and the friendly team was able to gank her and get the kill, which is absolutely lovely. Enemy team has very good sustain, and the build path that I, I want to go is just going to be super weird. So, I'm telling you now, this game is just take it with a grain of salt, because my, my build path is going to be so strange. We'll take this camp. We're not the best at taking camp, uh, or that camp. We're really good at taking most camps in this game, but that camp in particular, we're just not superb at taking. 
I need to be top lane to help the Vikings out, but I also want to be full HP and mana for this objective, because that's one of uh, Mathael's issues, is he can run out of mana just because he has such great sustain. Look at that range on my E. Oh, it's so good. Use my W to dodge out any damage coming my way. And I would love to hit level 7 here to be ahead on a talent tier before this fight. Not particularly because we're great at other, um, great power spikes at level 7, but just because I want to be ahead. Making sure to spam out our E to get our mark on all these heroes. And I will place down my... Uh, Place down my turret as well while I have some time to do that. And just continue to do my best to get my mark on these heroes at all times. I do see minions available in the bottom lane. So I want to soak this up quickly. That will be our level 7 right here in our pocket. We do lose a, a viking, unfortunately. Two viking, three viking. All vikings are gone. There's our level 7. And uh, friendly team is able to pick up a counter kill though on the Zuljin. And I will use this time while Zuljin is dead to continue to further our experience. Uh, small, small lead that we have. I think we'll lose that objective right now uh, because we lost. Oh, no, we didn't even lose someone. Hanzo had to base. So there's no reason to be fighting there. We're down on numbers. Best case scenario is get some more soak. Don't ping me because you made a bad play, dude. I... Not having it. I think I lose to Kira, especially if I have no minion wave. So we're going to run away. And then uh, get back in here with the enemy team. Uh, a little bit low by the looks of things. See if I can't just hit a random pot shot there. There we go. Get in on these enemies. Continue to spread my mark all over them. Trying to just... Deal as much damage as possible. That's the lockdown that I was afraid of, though. So all we can do is try to heal up uh, off of spamming our Qs and our ally keeping me alive. There's a really good job by our Anduin there. I'll tap here to maybe be able to re-engage. Uh, unfortunately, though, with Illidan's death, it does not look like we'll be able to do that. So we will just run away uh, and get some more soak elsewhere. Thankfully, this is a protector map. So uh, that means it has a large amount of health. And I can hopefully whittle it down a little bit with my percent damage. Um, I mean, just get get our minion waves soaked a little bit. We can't keep falling behind on XP as we are already behind on kills. Looks like the Zuljin and Tracer in the protector. That's one thing to take good note of because if you're not careful, uh, you could get annihilated by them jumping out at the wrong time. Oof. That hurts. Go ahead and send out my... Send out my hurdy stuff. Try to bring them some sort of pain. And we're rapidly approaching level 10. Overall, pretty good defense. I'm, I'm happy with how that turned out. As we could have lost a lot more. Um, we're not that far behind on XP. So not terrible, especially whenever you consider the enemy team just has clearly such a better comp than me and my team. Tracer using her bomb on me, but not the end of the world. Now, Last Rite sounds good, but Tormented Souls also sounds very good. I like them both a lot, and it kind of depends on what level 16 I plan on going. And I'm kind of leaning towards Mortality. So with that being said, I think we're going to pick up Tormented Souls, and once again... This is not the build that I typically go. I don't know if I mentioned it, but stick around for the end of the video, and I'll go over the, the build paths that you can go. This is just what I have to do because it's a game of quick match, and what I have to do to try and get something done. I don't think I want to go last rights here, just because um, they have Tracer Rewind and Zul'jin Unkillable that I don't think I'm going to get the value that I would like off of it. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> we're fine. Trying my best to soak up whatever uh, soak is available to me. While keeping my buildings as healthy as possible. Chaser goes in on Hanzo, who thankfully is able to live by the looks of things. And if I can just force her out. She blinks past my 
ability. That's unfortunate. Just doing our thing, trying to play our game plan, playing to our strengths and the enemy team's weaknesses. And our strength is wave clear. That's huge. We're able to make him pop Tazdingo really early, uh, which means he hopefully shouldn't have it by the time this next objective turns on. Come out here. So a big issue with Mathael is we are incredibly gankable. One of the most gankable bruisers in the game, just due to the fact that we have no real disengage and we're very squishy. But we're doing our very best. Despite us being down on kills, we're trying to soak to keep ourselves a little bit even. Just a very small amount even. Uh, friendly team actually won that fight. I kept hearing the Vikings die, but that was us winning that fight by the looks of things. Uh, I'll come in here and look for a little bit more. We'll ping the runner away. Just trying to help the friendly team out a little bit. And with them getting those massive picks, I'm going to look to continue to soak. <clears throat> Not super, not a lot I can do here. All right, enemy team is back up. So we're going to go ahead and ping around our way for this fight. I do have my ult up. He might have uh, unkillable up. I just need to pick an, an ability here. Trying to dodge out any, uh, any stuns that the enemy team might be able to send my way. Unfortunately, they just have so much good damage on my team. That there's not a whole lot that we can do versus them. We're whittling them down, but that's all I can do is whittle. I can't actually get a good kill on one of them. And, yeah, you could say, well, you didn't pick up last rights. What do you expect? But, I mean, this is also a very uphill battle for us to try to be fighting in. And because of those deaths, uh, we're waiting for Illidan to respawn. We're going to go ahead and pick up a little bit more soak. Try to get as much value on the map as possible. And I'm going to go bottom lane first to clear that. And then I'll clear mid on my way back up to the objective. So hopefully they'll be patient and wait for me. I need to be picking a level 13 talent. I don't know what to pick though because they all suck. Uh, we're going to go for this one. So hopefully we can get good fights happening. Unfortunately, friendly team got engaged upon before Illidan got back. And that will be probably the loss of the objective. I need to be top lane to hold them back as surely they'll push my building while capping the objective. And, I mean, why shouldn't they? They have the capabilities to do so. Oh, I was hoping I'd be able to save the building, but not quite. We are scaling, which is good. Um, Getting closer and closer late game. I'm just going to go to base. There's nothing else on the map for me to do right now. And I might as well be full health, full mana for the objective push. Compared to how bad this game has gone thus far, due to our our soak and um, friendly teams' nice couple picks and our great damage we deal to the protector, oh no. Due to those things, we haven't lost out on too, too much. I'm going to go ahead and use this. Uh, use my sippy cup and pick up mortality. I want to be mirroring wherever this protector goes. Because of our percent damage. Owie. You're mean. As long as we keep the building alive, I will be a happy, happy wub. Uh, Illidan is in a weird spot right now. He is full HP, though. He is using the hunt middle lane on Tracer, who was unfortunately able to counter two ultimates there just by pressing her E button. And at this rate, I'm kind of struggling on where I think I should be. I guess middle lane to help the friendly team defend, but are these minions pushing into me? That I need to be soaking? Yeah. I don't want to actually clear these that fast because I want these minions to come even further and closer to me so I'm not super gankable. Unfortunately, Illidan's here, but we have our healer, so we'll be able to get these without any threat of dying. And they'll probably go for this, but I need to be defending middle lane. Clear out the minions so they can't tank for Tracer. I'm going to activate my one ability. Uh, so that way I get a large amount of spell armor in just a second. 
or two seconds after I activate it. Um, I am a little bit split from the friendly team right now. But we're just trying to stick on a tracer here and pump out the damage that we need. Uh, I'm going to activate my ult as well. Unfortunately, they have unkillable back up and ready to go. But we're, we're doing the best that we can to try to stick to this enemy team. Uh, and pump out as much damage as possible. We were not able to get more than one pick there. Uh, and we used both of both my ult. We used play it again. I need to try to keep my ally alive here. So we'll just be like, hey, friend, we're here to help you out. Don't really want to get stunned if I can help it. I'm running low on mana as well. So... Now might be an okay time to base. If they get engaged upon, I'll be there to help them. We will lose middle lane just to the sheer amount of pressure that this enemy team has been able to sustain on top of us. But we get a camp. We're still even on XP, and we're getting closer and closer to level 20. Which isn't the biggest power spike for my hero. There we go. Able to pick up a kill on the tracer there. Um, I... I'm just hoping I can get my ability back in time. I'm not done. Can I Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it? W? Huge. We get it. my W off. And we're able to pick up a kill on the... Uh, oh, on the enemy team's... Li Ming. Right before the objective is big. Both the Tracer and Li Ming falling. And now we are all of a sudden on track to hit level 10, 20 before they are. Uh, there's a minion wave in middle calling my name so we'll go ahead and make sure this gets cleared out very quickly and then i'll be bottom because i have that fast mount speed to just zoom on down to my friendly team we'll ping the run our way here uh, i would love to fight before the enemy team gets their gets their team revived and gets to level 20s so hopefully we can hit our level 20s soon as well All right, we're going to go for final curtain. Illidan getting good push nonetheless. Enemy team just now fully respawning here. Just going to try to whittle these guys down a little bit. Uh, Illidan coming in with a ability on the Zul'jin. Maybe we'll be able to get the kill out there on him. I'm able to get uh, one kill. Looking for more than that. But we're not quite able to hit it, hit it there. Uh, no, my poison effect got it on the on the Anduin. We'll pull Kira away from his team, and we're right back there in there on this uh, on this Li Ming, and that was a triple kill, which is huge for us. See if I can't continue to put some pressure out here with the friendly team. Uh, really good job there. Heal up off of this and come to my healer too, even to get in the protector. Take the protector. And uh, that's an unfortunate kill. I'm trying to think of how we want to play this. Zuljin's dead, so we'll get some push going here. Tracer is just going to be an annoying fly. We're going to have to dodge the Li Ming's abilities. She's middle, so nothing to worry about there. Get out of here, Tracer. No one likes you. Zuljin did just revive. So I don't really want to stack him with the Protector. And I think, actually, we need to run. Yeah, we're going to need to run because Zul'jin's alive. Uh, maybe we can get a pick here on the Li Ming as she rotates out. Come on. Darn. I just need to run because Zul'jin Tracer have enough movement speed for seven heroes. And will be able to... Uh, chase us down if we're not careful i'm mainly trying to just escort my healer out now with that objective we got very little done with the protector but we killed middle because we were drawing the attention of some of the enemy heroes so this camp's gonna be up in just a moment we'll just do our best to be a good player help out the friendly team in some way shape or form hanzo using his alt here Tracer being an annoying hero. Kira's split, so if we fought them here, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So we're going to go ahead and walk forward as quick as possible with the Protector. Uh, try to get my 
abilities out here on these enemy heroes, but they're too damn fast. And this is the a big issue with Mathael, is you are very easily kiteable. Unless you get your mark on a hero, you are very easily kiteable. We'll go ahead then and start to do anything else on the map that we can try to perform and get our uh, use our resources to get something good happening. Because remember, we're very good at wave clearing. We're very good at uh, dealing some damage. I'm going to need to activate this ability because I don't feel like dying. Really nice ult by my allies here. And we're just jumping in on this backline of the enemy team, holding down Q as best as we can to try and keep them uh, in a bad position. Dealing really good damage out there on them. Um, unfortunately, though, Li Ming is in our backline, causing mayhem. We'll try our best to cut her off here. There we go. And an auto attack Q plus a, a W thrown in there gets us a kill on the Li Ming. This is a massive uh, turn of events. And we are all of a sudden not too far away from winning this game. We've pulled it back from having a very lackluster composition compared to theirs and are now in a position where this game is winnable just trying to keep him away from my friendly team remember we can't take too much damage we're not very good at taking damage or sieging for that matter um but there's a huge pick on the keep i don't think i really want to greed for course we're going to go ahead and ping retreat and just play our game our game our game we don't want to fall into the enemy team's game of Oh, they want to be fighting. They they love hero fights. We are more of a sieging hero. We're more of or, or soaking hero. Getting that experience lead and holding it. They are all about fighting, so I don't want to be doing that. I'm playing my game. Pick up this. I don't really want to be the one to hold it because I can get bursted. But I guess anybody else on the friendly team can as well. Uh, they're a little bit split currently. Zuljin is on his way in, and we don't have Illidan right now. He has the hunt, though, up. And I think just backing out. Yeah, with that damage we're taking, I don't want to deal with it. We're just going to back out. Our lanes push better than theirs currently. They're uh, in favor for us to win. If the if we all were to die, the Winions were, would eventually win the game for us. So taking it nice and slow is fine on our terms. We do need to be careful, though, because if Li Ming gets resets off of the Viking deaths, uh, it could be a devastating blow to us. Yep, play it nice and slow. We got our camp up. Let's take our camp. Don't worry about fighting there. Enemy team is going to have to react to this eventually. They're going to have to react to this eventually. So we have all the time in the world to do what we need. Uh, they use Light Bomb by the looks of things. I'm going to activate my one ability here. Oh, no. Activating this, uh... Come on, give me the turret. Activate the turret, too. <laughs> Stay in this Healy area. <laughs> that was a very quick, nasty pick by the enemy team, and it cost them very little. Now, at this rate, fighting into them might be a bad play. Uh, unless they, they misplay slightly, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Yeah, I don't really want to go for this. A huge pick there by the enemy team on our on our Hanzo will force us to just fully retreat. And once again, though, they have to deal with this. So they're going to have to send one hero that way. Or they're going to have to deal with top lane. So they're going to be split for this no matter what. Or, or they're going to fight. And that won't be as good for them. My Anduin is still alive. So I'm okay kind of, you know, just poking into them a little bit. Getting a little bit of damage out there. And just trying to keep my abilities on them. Force their healer to work double time to stay alive. And look at that. We're shredding the protector. With the help of the friendly team, of course. But this is a 22-minute protector. It should not be dying this fast. I need to be super duper careful because uh, I can get bursted by the protector if I'm not too careful. I want to soak up this minion wave here and then be bottom to help the friendly team out. So we'll ping the run our way. Uh, I really hope that they don't snipe this building because right now this lane is an excellent tool for us. 
So we're just going to say, this is mine. Stay away, red team. I don't have much abilities up right now to stay alive. Uh, nice ult there by the Anduin. And that's a huge pick on the uh, enemy team's... Uh, on the enemy team's... Both... Li Ming and Anduin. We're trying to just chase down these enemies. Keep my Reaper's Mark on them. That's a quad kill. And I think we may have just won this video game. As long as we don't get bursted by Zul'jin in his last... Uh, stand we should be fine no need to greed just play keep playing it safe if he overextends though damn straight i'm going in on him continue continue next next time he he shows himself i'm going in again if i can uh hopefully Illidan can get dealing some damage to this core really good ult there by our uh anduin keeping us nice and healthy once again we're going to look for the damage that we can get. We force out Tazdingo, if nothing else. And the core is falling ever slowly. It's getting there, and we have finished this game. Holy cow, against all odds. And just like I said at the start, if you give up, you will lose. So, we played our game by... We, we made sure we weren't going to get ganked. We did not want to get ganked. We wanted to abuse our good wave clear and soak to... Uh, further our experience lead or sustain an experience lead and uh sus that put us into the late game where we actually had a very good fighting chance we made sure that if the enemy team was going to push we were going to hold strong against them and make sure that they couldn't get much push rolling and we did not feed into them and let them get all the damage out there in the world on us because that is a very scary team with Zul Jin, Kira, Tracer, and Li Ming resets into an uh, Illidan who's just going to get obliterated by some of those heroes. And the Lost Vikings giving Li Ming so many resets really just need to put our head down and play our game. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the build we went in this game and why I went it. And it turned out to be quite a similar build to uh, one that I go often, and it's one of two builds that are that are very good. So, the build I went in today's video was on a pale horse at level one, gaining twenty percent movement speed while mounted is a huge buff that allows you to be almost anywhere on the map at any time. It turns him into a pseudo uh, global hero. Then we go for throwing shade at level four. This increases the range and reduces the mana cost of my E and you use this to poke down enemy heroes and kind of just wear out their healers mana bar or the enemy team's health bars and then we went for massacre this is what really allows us to be uh both survivable in fights and a dominant force in the late game then we go for tormented souls uh which I explained it in the game both these alts are very good last rites uh would have been nice to pick up but with the anduin healing and the uh tracer rewinds the zuljin taz dingoes i just didn't feel like i would have been able to get many last rites off and felt that getting double the w's would be better because casting tormented souls resets the cooldown of uh wraith strike your w then i went for shot of wisdom because on a 20 second cooldown Gaining 50 spell armor for 4 seconds is a lot, especially on a hero who struggles on staying alive. And I felt like I would need this to stop pulse bombs, avoid getting re Li Ming resets, and just general survivability. Level 13 is where Zul'jin's survivability comes in, and this was just what I thought would be best. I thought it worked out well that game. Then I go for Mortality at level 16, and this is where you go from a... Uh, annoyance to the enemy team to a oh my god he's going to kill all of us so when damaging a hero uh wraith strike deals bonus damage equal to eight percent of the hero's maximum health and if i'm not mistaken this combos with massacre so in that large area that your w is now applying reaper's mark it's also dealing eight percent of their maximum health i'm not sure if that's how it works somebody let me know down in the comments please and then, uh, at level 20, we picked up Final Curtain, which combos well with Throwing Shade because you're kind of an opportunistic, poke them down, whittle them down, wear out their health and mana bars, and then you go in for the kill with Massacre and Mortality. So, that was the build I went in today's video. Um, 
I'll show you the other build that you can go as uh, as Mathael, which is uh, first off with that build I just shown. That is that ended up being the W build that you go. Um, the only change is that level one you pick up Death's Reach, and then you know the same thing with Throwing Shade, uh, Massacre. All it depends, but typically Tormented Souls. Thirteen depends, and then Mortality and Final Curtain. Um, or you could also go the Alt upgrade with the W focus build, or you could go for uh, a Q focus build, which is very strong, especially when the enemy team doesn't have a lot of damage. It allows you to sustain and rip through enemy heroes, and it's typically what you pick up if you are in the solo lane, because you want to be drafting Mathael as the double soaking bruiser. But if you have to draft him as the solo laning bruiser, then you go a Q build most of the time, and that is focused around on Pale Horse at level one or Fear the Reaper. They're both good, uh, but Pale Horse I like way better. Then you go for Die Alone, which allows you to deal more damage to a single... If, you're, if your Q damages only a he, one hero, it deals more damage. So minions, it can have a million uh, marks in your minions, but as, if it's only one hero, it's going to deal more damage. And then Cold Hands, so you're slowing enemies. You notice I was getting kited to hell and back there. Well, if I had Cold Hands, kiting wouldn't be as big of an issue. Uh, which is really good whenever you're going into melee assassins. You're able to actually kite around them then, which is very fun. Uh, last Rites is typically what you go with this build, just because uh, you're able to blow up tanks easier. Siphoning Soul, because the extra healing um, is necessary whenever you're trying to be in all the enemy melee's face. The extra healing is very good, but this, once again, level 13, really think about this talent tier for your first 12 levels, as this is the one that's going to give you survivability, you know? Do you need that unstoppable? Do you need that spell armor? Do you need the physical armor, or you just need straight healing? Typically, with the Q build, you need straight healing. And typically, with the W build, it's more ranged here as you're getting on, so you need one of the other talents. Um, and then you go for Soul Collector, and same thing as the other build, level 16 is when you go from, like, a dang, this hero is annoying and dealing good damage, to, oh my god, we are dead. By picking up Soul Collector, you reduce the cooldown of your Q by half a second and increase its range by 25%, which means you're spamming this out, ripping the souls of enemies, and shredding them while healing for an absurd amount. And then I, the level 20s with this build are interchangeable, but Angel of Death is a very strong pickup, and I go in most of my matchups when I go Q build. Anyways, that was Mathael, the Angel of Death. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.